is there plans to do um, like on demand um, encoding or transcoding? And then hmm. if that is the case, is um, are there plans to do anything interesting with the transcoding aside from just the transcoding, like um, like using some AI technologies to you know identify what's in the scenes that could maybe then be cataloged to add some value to um, the output as opposed to just um, having um, straight transcoding and uh, yeah yeah does that, the, does that make sense <laughs> yeah yeah sure that, yeah for sure that's a that's a great question um, you know video on demand transcoding has been um, something that that's actually always been available for in, in the live peer network, but just uh, hasn't quite uh, been like productized heavily. Right. So, so, um, you know, like it, it for, for the live peer node right now, right. You can actually send like the way to transcode is you send it like little video segments, right. And those segments get transcoded piece by piece. Um, you know, that's how you transcode a live stream. Right. Uh, but you know, for, for a video on demand file, you can you can do the same thing, right? You can you can cut up the video file into small segments and, and transcode them uh, one by one, and then uh, reconstruct back into into a transcoded version of, of that file. And and um, and people have done experiments throughout the years of like you know trying to accelerate that process as much as as much as possible by, for example, using different broadcasters. Um, Right, so you, so you can kind of parallel parallelize that that transcoding process. Um, the 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 interesting thing about video on demand transcoding is that um, um, there is kind of this long tail of of video that don't ever get transcoded on the like on the internet. Um, you know, if you, even if you go to YouTube, right, if, if you just upload a video onto YouTube, they don't just automatically transcode it. Uh, I, I think you have to, you know, you have to like reach a certain threshold for your video to be to be qualified as uh, as transcode worthy. Um, and, and, and that's simply just because there's too many too, too much video being created uh, on a daily basis for for all of that to be transcoded. Um, so I think here, live like there, there is a pretty interesting opportunity for uh, for the live peer network to, to tap into that, and because live peer is so much more affordable um, in terms of transcoding, um, as it relates to the roadmap, um, we're, we're actually starting to work on uh, a video on demand API product, right? So, so if you go to uh, that's actually actually been. Um, uh, kind of released a couple weeks ago. If you go to livepeer.com um, slash docs, um, you will see um, um, like you uh, and you go to the API reference, um, you will see video on demand uh, API endpoints. Uh, and, and we created this, uh, we, the, the product team recently created this um, to um, help Web three developers to to better create video based NFTs uh, because there there's now currently a lot of um, limitations around like the size of the video that you can create NFTs on and and, and things like that. Um, so 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 we're trying to create a product that addresses all um, you know all those pain points. Um, in the f um, and I think that product will continue to evolve and become uh, and become more. Um, uh, kind of more scalable and, and try to address more use cases. Um, as as it relates to um, like adding smart like uh, like more like AI based features and, and th things like that, I think that's a really interesting direction to go down. Um, there, uh, there, but uh, at the same time, there's just so much low hanging fruit uh, right now in terms of the the type of services that Life Peer can create. Um, on top of this infrastructure for for video on demand transcoding, that I think in the near term, we'll probably focus on focus on that to drive adoption on um, for this use case, right? Like continue to drive more demand onto the live peer network through this, uh, and then once we you know, once we think we're um, we, we've achieved a certain milestone. Um, yeah, I, I think adding the you know the AI capabilities and, and and more kind of video processing functionalities into the network is is definitely 
uh, like an interesting direction to take. Okay, cool. So, but so so on demand is definitely part of like uh, uh, actually, I guess it's it's already happening that uh, I wasn't even really aware of. I mean, I knew that um, through like Live Peer Inc, you can have it save your um, your live stream, but I didn't really realize that um, it was a uh, just kind of as a, as a, can you do it just straight up um, on demand? Um, is it and is that only through Inc? Um, or did I mis did I misunderstand that? Um. If you're running a live peer node, um, you have to. I think there are some like open source projects around where, uh, like, file that video, maybe one of them, uh, where you know there's like scripts that allows you to um, like do like basically do that process of uh, segmenting the video, transcoding them one by one, and then like um, uh, aggregating them back to to a to a file. Uh, but then you'd have to. Um, you know, if you really want to support kind of the playback of that, you you'd want to like export it into S3 and um, and kind of kind of like put that solution together yourself. Um, but uh, the, you know, the LifeFair.com product kind of uh, puts that together for developers, so, so it makes it a little easier to develop. Um, and by the way, all of that, um, you know, all of those modules that that's been created to power that. Um, that platform is is open source and um and and, and anyone can kind of take advantage of that as well. <laughs>